Bilbo Rabbits. <laughs> You know what the worst part is when he said it? The first time I saw the movie, when he said it, I heard rascally rabbits. I'm like, what what just what just happened? Yeah. <laughs> what are you talking about? Yeah, Radagas watches Looney Tunes all the time. <laughs> and then like I started like I'm I'm I missed half the chase, really, thank God, because I was thinking in my head I was trying to work it out, and then I was like, Roscabel, he lives in Roscabel. That's okay, <laughs> I get it. <laughs> it took me a few times to figure out what he was saying. I was Googling like genus and species, rabbits, and it's like, what, what type of rabbit? Oh, Ross, Ross oh, Got it. I understand now. Uh, right. we're, we're off topic. Yeah, we are. And, and, and although I do love the fact that Gandalf's like, no, they're going to catch you. And he's just like, no, they won't. And that's it. That's the, like, yeah. that's his, that's his comeback. No, they won't. <laughs> Me? What? My rabbits? What? No, Gandalf. Come on. <laughs> Silly Gandalf. Um, so, whoever it is, <laughs> the person comes in, brings, and brings word that, that Elrond is needed. Blah, 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 blah. You know, that they're going to have to face the necromancer. Blah, blah, blah. We set that up. Right. El- Elrond is. Dis- is He's not distraught. Distraught's not the word. He's burned. He's burdened. And he shows up at <coughs> he shows up at the door of the cottage right before Estelle's about to run off to, to his lesson. He says, I think we're going to have our lesson here today. You know, and and you know, this might be one of the few times that he's been inside the cottage. As a matter of fact. Gil, and so Gilrime might be like like clearly like something is up here. Right. <laughs> Um, and so he's maybe he's come to the house because um, this is probably a really bad idea because I the, it's probably not well known who the necromancer is. But if mm-hmm. you know the people in, in the halls, the main parts of Riven, Rivendell, uh, that's what they're talking about. Is what what do we need to do about this yeah. necromancer? And Elrond's just had enough. It's like I need to get away from yeah. this. That's Where can I go to get away from these these elves and their talkings about the necromancer? Well, hey, there's the human cottage on the edge of town. Right. Nobody's gonna bother him there. Right. Because you know, right. maybe people keep coming up to him. What you know, what are we gonna do? And it's like what I'll let you know what we're gonna do when I know what we're going to do. Right. If you give me time to think about it. <laughs> um and so okay. So let's get into the story real quick. Right. Before we do that, uh-huh. I have to turn on the light because the sun is setting on yeah. Des Moines, Iowa. So just uh-huh. give me a second. Midwest. We're back. All right. Uh, and better lit. Anyway, so um, let's get into the story. So the first thing we're going to see is Yvanna walking through the forest. And, you know, you hear this crashing sound and you know she's like looking out into the forest and trying to see and then this thing comes we're careening out of the forest and we see a a a saddened and horrified look on her face and she just puts out her hand makes some sort of gesture and it just passes out at her feet and anticlimactic is all get up um, it's, it's the start of the episode. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah. Um, Orame comes riding up. And <clears throat> so their conversation, I feel like Orame's first impulse is going to be to kill the thing. Yavanna's impulse to not kill it. Um... <clears throat> But somehow we have to get out of that conversation that Orme's been off looking for the children. You know, maybe Yvonne even asks him, you know, have you found them yet? Have you found the children yet? We could even, um, you know, when uh, I see the scene, the beast comes charging through. Uh, she puts the beast to sleep. And then when the beast is asleep, that's when Orme comes through. Right. Yeah. Right. And, uh, 
you know, maybe he goes, wait, well, did you just kill this thing? She's like, no, I didn't kill it. It's like, oh, sorry. And then <laughs> she's like, hey, where have you been? And she just says, you know, have, or like even, have you been, have you been hunting these beasts? Have you been hunting my beast? It's yeah. Like, you know, no, I was, I was off. You know, looking I would never do that. <laughs> right. Like, what? What? No. no, of course not. <laughs> I was, I was off looking for the children. Uh, yeah. And then, uh, you know, I was looking for the children and then I saw this beast yeah. crashing through the woods. And maybe he should tell, maybe we can set up the fact that they're going to have to be killed. You know, he, he's yeah. going to, he's going to set it. He's going to say something to the effect of, you know, Yavanna, they've been killing everything that they see. You know, we're, they're going to have to, we're going to have to do something about them. They can't, we can't just let them. You know, you created all of these forbid. You we, we created all forbid this. Yeah. Please. You created all of these these creatures and none of them will survive this if we don't do something about it. If we don't if if we don't get get rid of these these monsters, these creatures. Right. He can play the whole uh, you know, what if, you know, what if this thing had come upon the children? You know, heaven right. forbid one of these things hasn't already found them. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So she's going to go back. She's going to go back and talk to Ally because he's going to give. He's going to confess the creation first of the dwarf star. Go ahead. First of all. Can we totally make this beast a dinosaur? We've done it already. Um, the, okay. the beast that Tokus and, and Orme kill is a is we we've we tried to think it through. Um, and the best thing that I've come up with is one of these. Um, but one of the things that did come up, there's a um, a predecessor of like wolves and bears mm -hmm. that. Um, that somebody found a picture of, I think Andronicus or something like that. And it's massive. It's the largest mammal, mammalian carnivore ever to live. It's huge and it's pretty terrifying. Um, so I think that that or would maybe, maybe it's a, uh, it's a rabid giant sloth. You know, those huge ones that are like eight feet tall. Who knows? Maybe they're, maybe they're so slothful because Vana put the spell on them. When it was charging through the jungles, I'm just saying. I'm just saying it's maybe. a possibility. Maybe. I'm just saying maybe. it's on the table. All right. This hey, was my. Fairy tales. Yeah. You gotta explain how the sloth became a sloth. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> One second. One second. Let me find this thing. I just, I just really want to foreshadow dragons so that when well, I foreshadow dragons with dinosaurs, yeah, Hell Metal Core made the uh, the dragons just twisted dinosaurs. Okay, I found it. I found it. I think, I think I found it. Okay, so I'm gonna put this link in right there. That didn't work. What's this thing called? Oh, there we go. Yeah. All right. That is a, a picture of a T-Rex and a Giganotosaurus. The Giganotosaurus is on the right. The T-Rex is on the left. And I think okay. a, a Giganotosaurus is the way to go. Because it looks like... A, it looks a little, and actually, a, a Giganotosaurus, they, the head is shaped a little bit differently from this. This, the head looks a lot more like a T Rex. <clears throat> In actuality, their heads are more, um, more alligatorly. It, it, they, they come down. They're more wedge shaped. Is I think the word I'm looking for. And they are terrifying, and they are bigger than a T Rex. There's also this whole. There, there's this whole debate in the paleo world where it's like all these different dinosaurs that all look similar. Uh, they're like, oh, 
uh, like people half half the community less than half the community like uh these are actually the same dinosaur it's older it's just than... like this yeah. is an older version than this one it's just all these all these people that are finding yeah. these fossils just want to name it these yeah. dinosaurs no so it's like just, oh no, no it's different. is actually Gigantosaurus is actually different. Like the the shape of the skull is different. Right. Um, but it also it looks weird. It doesn't it doesn't look like a T Rex. Like it 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 looks strange. Right. Well, this one's green. That's weird. <laughs> I'm cool with that. Um, but anyway, the the and they're really cool anyway. But um, so yeah. and Andromachus, if I can find that real quick. Um, maybe that's right. Nope. So the the uh, the Papa T Rex thing is the one that uh, Tolkis and all of yeah, take down we earlier need to this season. Find something that would be a sufficient threat that could look like a right. potential threat to Tolkis. Um. The, yeah, to the yeah. Guy. I mean, Tolkis is going to be about ten to twelve feet tall, <laughs> like like right off the bat. And he's they're going to be him and Orme are going to be able to handle this thing with relatively little difficulty. But it's got at least look like <laughs> it it could actually do right. something to them. <laughs> can this be? Can this be one of our uh, spinoff shows? Is like a buddy yeah, cop drama uh, with Tolkis and Orme. <laughs> And then, like, like the 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 season one finale of their show, like they they take on like a Sharknado I, or something. I've been saying it the entire time is that we, that's already been done. You know the the animated adventures of Batman and Superman. It's already been done. Oh yeah, right, right. Um, but our show's different because our guy can't fly, so it's different. Yes, he he's Completely Mr. Incredible, different. not Superman. Yes, <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Exactly. Um, so, okay. Is there anything else that we want to say between Yavanna and Orme? Okay. So the next thing we're going to see <coughs> is Yavanna talking to Aule. And Aule can already be working on the chain. Like, he, that's what he's doing. Yes. You know, we don't, he's not. It'd even be cool. It'd even be cool if we, uh, if he's been making this chain throughout like four or five episodes, and it's been in the background this whole time. Mm. And it's like episode four, or that's too early, but like episode five or six. Yeah. Um, like we just see one or two links, and then just every episode, every time we go back to his his warehouse or whatever his workshop, like it's 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 two or three more chains. I think. And then that... after the door thing falls through, that's. That's when he starts to go to town on it. It would start. He he would start in episode eight because that's when him and Manwe go to Atumno. All right, and right. they meet and they meet with uh, Melkor, and there's this awesome confrontation between Aule and Melkor. <coughs> um, it's it's good. It's <laughs> yeah, it's awesome. Um, nice. so we're going for the Emmy with that scene. Yeah, well, because um, because uh, Manwe is like is like okay, we, it, it's time to go, but Melkor is still trying to bait him, and so he says to Aule, he basically insults Manwe to Aule, and that's it with Aule. He is absolutely had it, and he gets right up in Melkor's face, <coughs> which is going to be hilarious because Melkor is going to be like up here on him. It's going to be fantastic. <coughs> um, but basically, yeah, Myron's, Myron's going to see, in, in Myron's mind, Manway needed Aule to stick up for him. He didn't, but that's how right. it's going to look to Myron. Right. <coughs> so any, anyway, um, so Aule is working on the thing, right? And Yavanna talks about how worried she is for her creatures and you know she's basically going to to come to him with the concerns that orame basically just gave her like you know that you know if if these if nothing is done to to protect her her creatures from these beasts then 
they're all going to be destroyed. So Ale confesses to her. He confesses what he did with the dwarves to her. <coughs> um, and, you know, she goes through the whole, well, if you had talked to me about it, which we've already set up, uh, if you had talked to me about it, then we could have worked on it together. It could have been even better, you know, blah, 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 blah. Um, but ultimately, she's going to then go to Manway. <laughs> because even though Aule did this in, basically in the dark by himself, that's uh, Yvonne's not going to make that mistake. Um, so she's going to go to Manway. At which point, Myron comes in after Yvonne leaves and sees the chain. We have the discussion between Aule and Myron. <coughs> you know, what is this you're making? And Aule completely trusts him. Aule has no reason to suspect him. Um, and so he just tells him, you know, if the way things are going, at some point, Melkor is going to have to be stopped. He's going to have to be restrained. <coughs> and Myron's basically going to be like, but, you know, actually, Melkor's had a lot of really good ideas. And, you know, we, 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 we built the lamps with his help. And, you know, the, the problem is that everybody keeps blaming everything on Melkor, you know, right. as, as if everything is his fault. He's <laughs> gonna basically. That's because it is. <laughs> right. Right. Red flag. Uh, right. Um, when there, when out, when Myron, because the reason that Myron went with them to Valinor was because of his loyalty to Aule. Okay. He was impressed that Manwe had a plan, but ultimately it. You know, it was it was out of his loyalty to Aule, his his leader, his patron. I don't know. Um, <clears throat> and now that he sees that Aule has completely set himself up as an enemy of Melkor, he takes one of the he steals one of the links of the chain before it's put on. So it's it's you, you know what a torque is. Uh, I can pretend it's, to. There, it's um, jewelry that the Celts used to wear. It's like um, it's yeah, this it's a, a round yeah, it's a round thing that goes around your neck, and you can pull it apart because it's made out of precious metals and it's very malleable. And so it could kind of be in that shape because he hasn't he hasn't welded it shut yet, right? <clears throat> and so you know, or, my go on. Well, never mind. It was a bad idea. Carry on. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um. And so Myron steals. <laughs> I do that all the time. Um, usually after I've already started saying it, <clears throat> My, Myron steals it, and um, and he's gonna he's gonna take that that little gem back to uh, Atumno. Um, well, you know what the uh, he uh, Myron he could steal like like kind of a preformed link, but he could also just steal one of the regular links. Because that would give us the opportunity to show Melkor's power later, when he brings it to Melkor. Oh, to joining, yeah. Uh, where if he, if he, it's it's kind of it's a link that hasn't been enchanted is a awkward word to use in this instance, but it hasn't it hasn't been attached or whatever. It hasn't been fully completed, but it's kind of a link in form yeah. in link form, and so he brings it to Melkor, and Melkor is the one that he uses his power of heat basically to super heat right to weld it shut yeah. on Aeon way yeah. well yeah. Even, even yeah to form it into whatever form he needs it to be yeah okay yeah I like it um now it would be incredibly easy to just have Myron find the children on the way there but there's a problem because Quivenin is not on the way to a tumna. Correct. <laughs> Not even a little bit. <laughs> um, so, where's Angband? He's g Angband is closer to Koivin. Um, pull up. Koivin is very, very far to the east. Yeah. yeah. Koivin is very, very far to the east. 
um, if you could, if you imagine like Europe, a Tumno is in like Norway, Angban is in like Germany, and Quivenin is like by Stalingrad. Yeah. <laughs> um, have they renamed that to Volgograd yet? I think they have. So it's not it's not exactly on the way. Right. So he would have to ha he would have to be doing something out there already, unless Melkor sends him out there specifically to look for the children. Well, Atumno is actually pretty close to Quivian, according uh, the, according to the map is that it? I'm okay. looking at. Okay, it's it's altogether possible. I mean, there's there's got to be a reason why Melkor is all over that before Orme finds them. Right. I mean, it's it's obviously it's going to be out of the way wherever you go, but it's according to this, right. it's actually pretty close to Atumno. It's uh, Atumno is just mm -hmm. north of Quivianen. Okay, I have an idea. Myron shows up with the link at Atumno. We're 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 going far further ahead than we need to at the moment, but uh, just to to kind of get this resolved. Um. He shows up with the link right before Ayanwe gets there. Yep. And so Ayanwe arrives and his arrival is announced and Melkor tells him to leave because he doesn't want he doesn't necessarily want the Valor to know that Myron's there. You follow? Yeah. And so Myron's just out wandering so that Ayanwe doesn't see him. Um uh, he because it, um, yeah. a solution to this is, according to the map that I'm looking at, mm -hmm. Atumno is, for all intents and purposes, directly um, east of where Myron would be coming for, would be coming from, um, and so Atumno, uh, it's directly east from Tenequitil. Yes, yes, I agree. And so, um, Myron heads straight east, gets to Atumno, um, gets the link to uh, Melkor, uh, and what shows up. Whoops, what are we going to do? Um, yeah. uh, since Quivianen is south of Atumno, the only other right. major thing that's that way, well, there's two things. Um, that are that way. Uh, the first one, which would be interesting, is Mordor. Um, it's an interesting option. What's what's okay. farther south than that is Almoran. Um, if Myron is still on the fence, he's not. He hasn't completely. He hasn't completely uh, given up on the Valar, and he he brings mm -hmm. this up to Melkor, and Melkor says. If, do you want to see what happens when you 